Welcome to Flash Tracks Woodworking. In this episode, we'll be building a set of stairs to replace those that you see behind me that were built 15 years ago when the house was built. There are three issues that I would like to fix with the new design. Least of all, the appearance. That could be fixed in some other way. Secondly, there's a bit of separation from the house due to the patio settling some over time. Most important is the first step. The first step is a doozy. You need to step over a lip from the sliding door down eight or nine inches to the first step. I want to add a landing step on the top in the new design to make navigating the stairs easier and safer. For low maintenance and overall appearance, I'll be making the entire stair project out of this five and a half inch wide Trex decking material. It'll be great for the treads, but it'll require some creativity to make the stringers and supports due to the size and the unfinished back. To get a working drawing of my stairs project, I use the online version of SketchUp. It's free and I'll pull in these tags and explain the elements of the stairs. So first we'll have a hanger, which will be the part that attaches the stairs to the house. Coming off the hanger board, I'll have three stringers along the bottom and then two more stringers at the sides, which I'm calling fascia boards because they also have the fascia on them. On top of the stringers, I'll add some supports that will go up underneath of the stair treads, which are shown here. The treads will fit into pockets on the fascia boards, but will rest on these triangles uh, attached to the stringers. There's some exposed treads here on the side, so I'll add a piece of molding to cover up those ends. Finally, I'll add a railing and a handrail to complete the project. I pulled the necessary dimensions, including the miter angles from SketchUp, and then use the miter saw to cut out the parts that I need for the first fascia board. I'll lay out these parts on the bench. You'll notice how the back side of the parts has those cutouts, and so I'm going to lay those parts back to back in order to have only finished edges showing. Once I've got those laid out, we'll move on to applying the fasteners. For each fastener, I'm going to drill a eighth inch pilot hole. Clear the chip. Countersink. Drill a clear hole through the top piece. Then place a one and five eighths number eight screw in the hole. To fasten the two pieces together with an impact driver. Repeat that as we go around the board. For this first pre-assembly piece, the side fascia piece, I use some wood slats and some clamps to align the boards then complete the fastening steps all around the boards. Because of the limited width of the materials I chose, I'll be doing some edge joining, using biscuits for alignment and integrity. Pictured here is the first stringer fascia assembly that I'm putting together. I use a biscuit cutter to create that groove to receive the biscuits, and then glue the two pieces of the subassembly together and clamp it up. off the first side assembly of the stringer and fascia. I will be adding on the mitered piece that will transfer the weight from the sides down to the patio and then glue it up. Now for the final step on the outside fascia stringer assemblies. I use the CNC machine to pocket out some areas for the treads to fit into and be supported on either end. I thought about different ways to do this and decided I could just do it more accurately by laying the pieces flat on the bed of the CNC and then let the router bit create those pockets for me. I'll speed up the video as we complete this operation. You'll see the bit making its way down through, even down to the back side where those grooves exist. It's gonna go through the miter joint and even through some of the biscuits, but no matter, we got plenty of material left here to hold up the treads on the side. 
I'll zoom out here so you get a little bit better view of what's going on as a router completes the final pocketing operation on that stringer fascia assembly. The three stringers in the center are a little less complicated than the stringer fascia combos on the side. They just need a small notch where the treads are going to rest. Of course, those small notches aren't sufficient to hold up the entire width of the treads. So I'm making these triangular support pieces to sit on top of the stringers and underneath of the treads as they span the width of the staircase. On these triangular supports, as well as on the stringers themselves, I'll be biscuiting again or cutting biscuit grooves so that I can align these supports on top of the stringers once I get outside in the final assembly. In order to check my calculations and measurements, I'm going to dry fit some of the biscuits and the wedges and the stringers and see if that assembly comes together here in the shop before I take everything outside. At long last, demo day has arrived. I've got enough pieces now to begin my stairway build and I need access to the side of the house. So I'll use a crowbar and detach the stairs and the railing from the house and set them aside to be further deconstructed at a later point. To begin assembling the stairs and attach them to the house, I was glad to have my good friend Ed to help me. The trick here is that I wanted to hang the stringers and the side fascia boards all to this hanger board and then put that hanger board up against the house. Once it was up against the house, I couldn't get to the back side, so we had to lift that whole piece in together. So we got that rotated up against the house, got one first board, checked our measurement on the width, went and got the rest of the boards, and then laid them on the stairs. Uh, it was a little tricky getting these to fit into the side pockets and not fall out, and then get those side pockets to collapse on the sides of the treads themselves. But with a little work, we got it all to come together nicely. Let's do a brief review of that first outdoor construction step. We had pre-made some fascia and some stringers in the basement and also cut the length a hanger board. However, since I wanted to attach this hanger board to the back side of these stringers, I really couldn't do that in this configuration. So what we were doing in that time-lapse video was laying these pieces down, attaching with some screws to the back side, and then rotating that whole assembly up against the house to complete the first outdoor step. Since we left the treads just sitting in the pockets of the stringers slash fascia, I'll add some screws to the outside just to make sure they're good and secure. Only the top tread is left uncovered by the fascia. So I'll cut that tread a little short and then add a piece of molding so that you won't see the grooves from the side as you look at the stairs. Now I can drop the two top treads on and register them up against that piece of molding that I just added. Then I'll grab the impact driver and screw them down from the top. At this point, the treads are only supported in the very back where I cut those notches in the stringers. I'll take my 12 wedges that I made and slide them up the stringers. I can level out the treads as I do this and create the support that I need underneath of the treads. So now the stairs themselves are pretty much completed as you see here. All we really need to do is add a railing, and then at the end we'll add a handrail. Let's take a look at that railing. To do that, we'll kind of spin around to the back here so we can have a look at the pieces that make up the railing. And uh, we're slitting some of that um, tread material in half, so we have this half width material. And you see the various pieces here that we need to make in order to make up the railing. I'll be using two power tools to cut the pieces for the railing. For the pieces that are about a 45 degree angle, I can use a standard miter saw and cut those out. However, there are some shallower angles that I need to make for that decorative O looking piece in the center of the railing. And for that, I have to pull out the sled and use a table saw in order to cut those shallow angles. I'll clamp the piece of tread material down to the sled and then run it through in order to get an accurate shallow angle on those particular pieces. So now I have a pile of pieces on the floor and I want to dry fit them to see if they're going to come together how I expected. Yep, looks pretty good. 
I'll start by pre-assembling that parallelogram window looking feature with some glue and some biscuits. And of course, plenty of clamps. Next, I'll take that parallelogram window and all the other railing pieces, flip them over on the back, lay them out very accurately on the bench, and screw them all together from the back side. The steps are in, as is the support for the handrail. You just need to add the actual railing itself, the handrail, in order to complete the project. I have some scraps left over. I'm going to see if I can cobble together a handrail that will match the steps from the pieces that I have left over from the rest of the project. I've got the pieces laid out for the handrail here. Each butt joint will be overlapped with a continuous piece on the other side. I'll glue all these pieces up to make one complete handrail. The next step is to add the hanger for the handrail. In succession, I will add the bottom hanger for the handrail, move up to the top step, hang the top hanger for the handrail, then I'll use some clamps to hold the handrail in place while I put in some screws from the underside to the, complete the installation of the handrail. Well, that pretty much completes the stair project. I'm considering it a success. Having that landing step, that 11 inches, as you proceed out from the kitchen before venturing down the stairs seems to be a, a great help. Makes us feel a lot more secure descending the stairway. Making the stairs out of this composite material seemed to be a, a good idea and also kind of a fun challenge to be able to make it all out of this material, not only the landing treads, but also the supporting structure. And also figuring out ways to accommodate not seeing this uh, composite material underneath, uh, figuring out a design that would do that. So uh, thanks for watching. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up if you want to see more like this subscribe and hit that notification bell. Uh, as the video ends, you'll see a couple more videos over here on your left side, a recent upload and also a video that YouTube recommends. With that, thanks for watching Flash Tracks Woodworking and we'll see you again next time.